Self-love is a complex concept that is often misunderstood. Many people associate self-love with pleasure, but the truth is that it goes much deeper than that. The more we love and accept ourselves, the less we need others to love us. This idea can be confusing for some, but it is an essential aspect of healthy relationships. It is important to remember that relationships are not limited to just one person. We get different things from different people in our lives, and we should not limit ourselves to one relationship. This is not to say that intimate relationships are not important, but rather that we have numerous relationships that are equally important in the grand scheme of things. When it comes to relationships between men and women, the most important thing is having the same purpose. If both individuals have a desire to be their best selves and are working towards that goal, then they are heading in the same direction. Whether their passion is to change the world, end world hunger, or lead by example, as long as they share the same purpose and are moving towards it together, they have a strong foundation for a healthy relationship. Evolution is a natural part of any relationship, and it is important to remember that mistakes will be made. However, if both individuals are committed to growing and learning together, they can overcome any obstacle. It is essential to approach the relationship with an open mind and a willingness to communicate openly and honestly. Great relationships are built on a foundation of mutual support and respect. When one person is not at their best, it is important to take responsibility for their own emotions and not rely on their partner to make them feel better. Both individuals should bring their best selves to the relationship and celebrate each other's triumphs. In a healthy relationship, there is a give-and-take dynamic where both individuals have the opportunity to share their perspectives and opinions. However, it is important to only share when asked and to approach the conversation with an open mind and a desire to learn. Ultimately, the key to a successful relationship is self-awareness. Individuals who are self-aware do not have to work at their relationships because they understand the importance of nurturing the space for that kind of evolution. By approaching the relationship with an open mind, a willingness to communicate honestly, and a commitment to personal growth, individuals can create a strong foundation for a healthy and fulfilling relationship. In a relationship, I refuse to work if it feels like a job. If it feels like we're constantly putting in effort and not getting anything in return, then it's not a relationship worth having. However, if we both bring our best selves to the table and celebrate each other's efforts every single day, then we have something special. We should also take the time to talk about what we've learned and how we can do things better in the future. One important aspect of a good relationship is being there to support each other, even when things don't go according to plan. If you're feeling down or unsure of yourself, I want to know how I can help you. What words can I say to motivate you and get you back on track? It's not about pointing out your mistakes, but rather helping you find your purpose again. When you have a relationship built on mutual support and understanding, you can overcome any obstacle. You don't have to follow the traditional relationship model based on what you saw from your parents. Instead, you can create your own path based on what works best for the both of you. It's important to note that there is a global shift happening right now. The way we've been doing things in the past is no longer sustainable in this new era of consciousness. You can see this shift in the way political systems, economic systems, and even religion are unraveling. It's not about blame or victimhood, but rather about embracing this change and moving forward. As individuals, we need to be aware of how we're being manipulated by outside forces. The media, television, and advertisements all play a role in controlling our emotions. We need to be conscious of how we're feeling and not rely on external sources to dictate our emotional state. This shift towards a new consciousness isn't about one person or group, but rather a collective emergence. It's about coming together as one mind and one heart. We have the power to create a better future for ourselves and for generations to come. As human beings, we often find ourselves stuck in between two worlds, unable to find relief from the emptiness and insecurity that plague us. We try to escape through drugs, sports, shopping, or other forms of stimulation, but when the novelty of that feeling wears off, we are left feeling just as lost as before. However, there is a way out of this cycle of emptiness. We must awaken to the consciousness of the planet, to the energy that surrounds us and propels us forward. 
we must be engaged in human transformation, opening our hearts to the supernatural and the mystical, and we must be sincere in our desire for change. The energy that surrounds us is constantly accelerating our feelings, endorsing who we are and what we believe. If we choose to be victims, the energy will support us in that choice, and we will live it fully. But if we choose to engage in transformation, to open our hearts, and to believe that something greater is coming, the energy will thrust us towards that end. We must not shrink in fear or hostility as we face these changes, but instead invite them in, believing that they will bring us to a greater level of consciousness. The answers to the problems we face are all around us, but we must awaken to them as a collective connected by the energy of love, gratitude, and freedom. As we awaken to this energy, we will see the hidden meaning behind all things. We will no longer be controlled by our emotions, but will rise to a greater level of energy, and in doing so, we will change something in our lives. This is the law of energy, and it is the key to our transformation. We must believe that we are not limited, that we are empowered and unlimited. If we temper our emotions and overcome our addictions to them, we will see the world as it really is, not just as it is presented to us on screens and in the news. We are the people that we have been waiting for. It is up to us to awaken to the energy that surrounds us, to believe that something greater is coming, and to empower ourselves to create the change we desire. Let us rise up and embrace this energy, for it is the key to our transformation and the key to our future. Have you ever found yourself cruising along in life only to suddenly hit a roadblock and find yourself hating everything around you, including the person next to you? It can be a frustrating and overwhelming experience, leaving you feeling like you want to quit and give up on everything. But how many times do you have to go through this before you realize that you don't want to live like this anymore? As a student, it's important to be astute and sincere about your emotions and reactions. When you find yourself hitting a wall, experiencing fatigue or an inability to reconnect with the present moment, it's a sign that you've reached the end of your emotional belief and neurological network. At this point, you have two options. You can choose to return to something mundane that will preoccupy your mind and keep you from exploring the unknown, or you can choose to trust yourself and push a little further. If you choose to trust yourself, you'll need to work to create coherence around the thoughts in your head. Instead of focusing on going anywhere or doing anything, focus on mastering the present moment. Work with your body to get back into the present and allow yourself to unfold back into possibility. It won't be easy, and you'll likely face some resistance from your brain and personality. In these moments, it can feel like you're David facing off against Goliath, with the problem or obstacle seeming much bigger than you. But when you stop giving it your attention and energy, you'll find that you can settle back into the present moment and see the thought for what it is. You'll become familiar and conscious of it, and you'll be able to address it and move past it. It may take 45 minutes or more of battling with your personality, but if you continuously choose love and push deeper into it, you'll begin to see progress. As you disinvest your attention and energy from the problem, you'll be able to pull energy back to yourself and find it easier to connect during meditation or other moments of introspection. The truth is that these roadblocks and obstacles are necessary for our growth and evolution. They force us to confront our fears and limitations, and they allow us to push past them and become stronger. So the next time you find yourself wanting to give up or quit, remember that it's just a temporary setback. Keep pushing forward, and you'll find that you're capable of achieving more than you ever thought possible. Have you ever come across a book that completely captivates you and leaves you with a new perspective on life? For me, that book is The Red Lion. It tells the story of an initiate who murders an alchemist and drinks the philosopher's stone, also known as The Red Lion, which grants immortality. However, he wasn't ready to drink it, and he wasn't of the right consciousness. As a result, he never forgot any of his lifetimes and saw all his demons. This book takes you on a journey through different levels of every single lifetime imaginable, and it's a journey that you and I can relate to. Throughout the book, the initiate runs into a secret society and becomes initiated. There is a chapter in The Red Lion called The Kilk Yard, which I ask my children to read every year. In this chapter, the initiate sits down in front of a statue and is tasked with animating it and bringing it to life. 
He spends years putting his life force and energy into animating this particular statue. And over time, he notices it swallows and moves its finger. As he begins to realize that he can take something inanimate and bring it to life, he gives it more of his attention and energy until it becomes a walking, talking being. This concept is similar to creating coherence in the brain and heart. The more coherence and order you have, the more enriched the experience becomes. You are creating a profound laser, a Wi-Fi signal that can allow you to read information that exists beyond the senses. However, you can't read this information unless you're ready for it, and your brain and heart must be coherent. The pineal gland, once activated, will transduce this information into profound imagery that is more real than anything you've ever experienced. Dr. Joe has researched the four states of matter and found that solids, liquids, and gases are not the most abundant form of matter. Plasma is the most abundant form of matter and is created when a negative and positive charge have not yet formed an atom. When you have a negative charge and a positive charge, you will have an electrical current running between the two and a field around that current. The universe connects through plasma and stars connect through plasma. The complex patterns that we see are impressions from the plasma that are being pressed into three-dimensional reality. Have you ever considered the possibility that reality is a projection? It may sound far-fetched, but bear with me for a moment. Imagine taking three stones and dropping them into a plate of water. As they fall, they produce concentric rings which interfere with each other, creating complex patterns of interference. Now freeze the water in the plate and shine a laser through it. What do you see? A hologram of those three stones projected out into space. This example may seem insignificant, but it's actually quite profound. It suggests that reality is not the solid, tangible thing we often take it to be. Instead, it's a projection created by the interference patterns of energy fields. Matter isn't emitting a field. Rather, it's the complex patterns of interference that create matter. So what does this mean for us? Well, it means that if we want to change something in the physical world, we don't need to change the physical thing itself. Instead, we need to change the pattern in the field. For example, a tumor is not the thing that needs to be changed. It's merely the effect of an incomplete chaotic pattern in the energy field. If we can change the pattern, we can change the physical reality. To do this, we need to practice brain and heart coherence. When we do this, we create order out of disorder, and we begin to function from a different consciousness. This consciousness allows us to interact with information beyond our senses and we start to realize that there's more to reality than we thought. This idea is not new, and there are many examples that support it. One of these is Masaru Emoto's work with crystals. When he exposed water to positive thoughts, he observed beautiful geometric patterns in the resulting crystals. When exposed to negative thoughts, the crystals were chaotic and disorderly. This suggests that our thoughts and emotions have a direct impact on the energy fields around us. The bottom line is that reality is not what it seems. By changing the patterns in our energy fields, we can change the physical reality around us. This requires a shift in consciousness and an understanding of the interconnectedness of all things. As we practice coherence and cultivate positive thoughts and emotions, we open ourselves up to a whole new world of possibility.